So I'm, my name's James Pallister. Uh, I'm AJ Publications Editor at the Architects Journal. I've worked in architectural publishing for about six or seven years now. Um, my job prior to this was the section editor of the, the culture section, which is where we edit and re review the latest books, exhibitions, events in, in architecture. Um, I still write a weekly column which is about cultural events within architecture in its broadest sense um, and also edit our commercially led publications. So publishing's changed quite a bit since I've since I've started working in it and obviously for many publishers one of the questions is how do you um, produce financially viable material which is of interest to your readers. Um, so the little section that I run is uh, sometimes it's called contract publishing or sort of commercial content. It sounds a pretty awful phrase, <laughs> but um, that's what, what, what publishing is. So a lot of my work is, is writing, as one might expect, going out to meet people, editing stuff. I work quite closely with our designers and art directors, various photographers who we work with. Um, obviously the, the look and feel of an architectural publication is crucial and it's what I'm interested in is how the, the words and the pictures combine to, to tell a story effectively but also be quite a beautiful object. How important do you think architectural criticism is for the profession? Um, I think I, I think it's, it's it's very important. So I think I think it depends. Uh, I think if you ask different architects, you'll get a different answer on on, on different days. Uh, often, I think journalists and critics are, are sometimes frustrated with the profession in that the profession likes the idea of having a, a healthy, robust, critical debate, uh, as long as it's not about their buildings. Um, so, but, but I think, obviously, if, if you work on something for five or six years, you've got a lot of time invested in that, you've got a lot of love, uh, effort invested in that, and it can be difficult if someone criticises it or says what you may perceive to be unkind comments about it. Um, but I think to a certain extent critics have, 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 have got to ignore that, they've got to be generous in, in trying to understand the project, what are the circumstances around it, what, what's of interest about that. Uh, sometimes the, 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 the formal characteristics of the building may not be up to an individual critic's taste, yet the building has an interesting story to tell, whether that's socially or, or technically. One, one of the things I'm interested in, and what I was really interested in when I first started working at the AJ, was the role that photography can play in criticism, and, and who commissions that photography. Is that seen as an entirely independent uh, discipline, or is it the architect is showing a photographer around and asking them to take certain shots from certain angles because that is how the building will look at its best. So I, I guess there's always there's always elements of compromise and in terms of looking at who, who's paying for it, who's who's commissioning it, who's writing it, that often you need a certain degree of access to write about buildings, um, which inevitably colours or can colour how people write about them. Um, but I think, I think there's some, been some really good writing in the last couple of years which, which talks about architecture as a, as a sort of more social phenomenon. How did you get into architectural writing? Uh, so I, I got into architectural writing fairly circuitous route. Um, I, uh, I'd 
I did an art foundation course prior to going to study social and political sciences. I always uh, studied art at school, but I sort of had a place at a good university to do quite an academic course and basically didn't have many precedents, people within my family who'd done arty things, so that, that seemed to be the, the, the safe route. Uh, I then decided to do an art foundation. I went to university. Uh, there I, um, I, I got into zine culture, fanzines, just little making little publications and um, I think retrospectively I was quite interested in, in graphic design, I just didn't really know that that was what it was. Um, I'd always been interested in, in narrative um, artists like Gilray, Hogarth, Franz Masaryl, um, and and those people, and then at university set up a an arts publication which was um, a mixture of short fiction, uh, polemical pieces, illustration, and, and and photography, and that was basically a reaction to there were quite a lot of journals there. Um, uh, student newspapers, but none which placed high importance on, on the visual material. And our sort of, uh, our motto was we wanted to produce something you would take home and stroke. It had to be quite nice. <laughs> so that, that was the sort of getting into publishing, and that was myself and my friend Nick Hayes, um, who's now a graphic novelist, He we, we worked on it together, we did everything from... Ed doing call for entries, editing, designing it. I used to do the layout and then flogging it and getting it, doing the hustle of going in the shop saying, please will you s sell our magazine, that sort of thing. So I did that for about a year after I left university. Um, I was a complete magazine geek and on account of running uh, my own magazine. And I knew about the AJ because they been through um, a redesign which used a lot of naturalistic photography uh, and I, I really liked that and I remember my, my girlfriend at the time studied architecture, she's now my wife, we were on the train back to Cambridge from London and we had a, a copy of, it must have been one of the second issues, I think it had a sketch of Arsenal on the cover and that, that redesign was done by practice called a practice for everyday life and I remember being on the train back and just being like wow this is great is it had a, it had a really I don't know if you've seen it but it had a really sort of stripped back spare Swiss typography to it, sort of Swiss modernist typography and the, the photography was um, very naturalistic and, and, and quite harsh and, and bleak in many ways um, so they had a a picture of a new Sure Start Centre in, in, in Glasgow and it was like misty because it was taken in in November and, and it had like a couple of lads in shell suits on the front cover doing like what guys do when they're like 14 and <laughs> hanging around on the street corners and it's like a it's, a it's a universal scene from British suburbia that everyone a lot of people are familiar with like lads sort of hanging around <laughs> to do, they're probably waiting for the chip shop to open. But it's quite rare to see that in architectural photography and that, that just seemed a really refreshing thing. Anyway, so I liked the magazine, a job came up as an editorial assistant and then I started uh, working there doing a mixture of different stuff. Where would you like to see publishing going? You know what, I, I think lots of people uh, get dewy-eyed and, and are really sad about the demise of publishing. I, I, I think that's rubbish. I think there's lots of people doing really interesting things in publishing. Um, and I think, I think just the mediums change very quickly, the financial models change really quickly. Um, getting people to pay for stuff is difficult and that, I, I, I see that as a problem in that I think journalists should be paid. Uh, I think, you know, there's value in what they do. Um, I guess I, I, I'd like to see it possible for 
publications like the Architects Journal to continue to be financially viable yet also have a coherent critical voice and, and be a, a kind of critical friend to the, to the profession in, in this instance. And I think the mediums through which they access those will, will change, but um, hopefully there's, there's, there's going to be a demand for rigorous, top-notch stuff.